Welcome to Sweet Valley High, where you'll meet identical twins Elizabeth and Jessica Wakefield. Both girls are blessed with spectacular good looks. Both wear exactly the same size clothes, but they refuse to dress alike. It isn't easy to tell them apart, but beneath the skin, there is a world of difference. A wicked gleam of mischief lurks in the depths of Jessica's eyes, while Elizabeth's reflect only sincerity. Welcome back, everybody, to a very special podcast. This is the podcast which we talk about all of your favorite TV series from yesteryear and then discuss them over a glass of wine or a coffee because it's like early in the morning. It's early as fuck. Yes, it is early as fuck. <laughs> I'm Patrick M. Don, and I'm joined here, as always, by the author, Kat Halstead. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Yes, and I know I said this is the podcast in which you talk about your favorite TV series from yesteryear, but we're, like, flipping the script on you today. We're, we're like, going well beyond our borders today. Far, far beyond. Oh, we're doing, we're switching it up. We're changing it. We're throwing you off balance. Yes, welcome to our first book club. Woo! This is It was like a joke that we said a few months back. You were like, we should do a Sweet Valley High book. And yeah. I was like, you thought I was going to say no, right? Yeah, I totally thought you would say no. And it, it was an astounding yes. I was like, yeah, let's do one. Let's let's do it today. Who cares? Well, actually, like I think originally I suggested the TV series. And then we were like, let's do a book. Let's do one of the books cuz the books are superior to the TV show. The TV show is kind of just not so good. I don't think I've ever seen the TV show to be real. Like, when was it on? It was it was one of those shows that got made for syndication in the nineties, and so it was always like random times wherever you live, like Saturday at one o'clock in the afternoon or something. Oh, okay. Was it late nineties or mid? So when nobody's gonna be watching, when no teen or preteen is gonna be watching TV. Yeah, they're they're probably outside. They're at the bowling alley having a soda pop with their friends. Or at the mall or something. Yeah, going to the Gap. Stealing stuff from Old Navy. Okay, did you ever watch Swan's Crossing? I did. I, I did okay. watch Swan's Crossing. Was it, was it around that time? Well, it was after it because um, the actress that played Mila on Swan's Crossing played Jessica. And her twin sister played Elizabeth. Okay, so Mila has a twin sister in, in real life. Yes. Okay, who would have thought? <laughs> I know, right? Who would have thought when you were watching Swan's Crossing in, like, 1992 that Mila had a twin sister? And that years later, they would be on an adaptation, a televised adaptation of Sweet Valley High! Exactly! Do you know what in Wild, if it was Sarah Michelle Gellar who was playing Elizabeth, and that we found out that she had a twin sister? Hey, <laughs> by this point, Sarah Michelle Gellar was a soap opera star. Yeah, she was playing Kendall, right? Was that her name? On yes, all Kendall Hart yeah. on All My Children. Yeah, she had brown hair. She she was kind of like a, a vixen, right? She was a troublemaker, always like causing drama for her mother, Erica. So was she a good character in, in 90s, yes. played by Sarah Michelle Gellar? Because usually like teens on soaps aren't fun. No, um, well, because here's the thing. She wasn't, Kendall wasn't really like a, they messed around with the ages because it's a soap opera. So Kendall was like 20-something. Oh, really? Yeah. Being Damn. played by like a much younger actress. Yeah, because Sarah Michelle Gellar was probably 20-something when she was playing Buffy. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the character in Cruel Intentions, whatever her name is. Well, because, okay, this is really funny, is that right, like, the week Sarah Michelle Gellar left All My Children... I believe Shane McDermott, who played Garrett on Swan's Crossing, started on All My Children as a teen. Oh, that would have been Garrett. like a... A Scott Chandler. Like an explosion. Like, <laughs> oh my, okay. Because Swan's Crossing was like my everything. I was a huge Sydney and Garrett shipper. Like before I even knew what shipping was. Like there was Sydney and Garrett and I was just, I was there for it. And 
I remember when I saw him on my screen on the same show. And then she was leave. Oh, my God. It destroyed me. It killed me. I was like, oh, my God. I was, like, so close. You wrote an angry, handwritten letter to ABC Daytime, and you're like, you fucking assholes. You are toying with my emotions right now. You were toying with, I like... I leaving, and he's showing up, and they were, they were like, oh, my God. It, it killed me. It killed me that week. I was like, oh! I was like, oh, my God, what if they cross paths? What if their characters... And then, like, nothing happened, because they were only on this show for, like, the same day, for, like, two or three days together. What was the actress' name again? Shay McDermott. Shane McDermott. Do you think Shane McDermott was like, the only way I will join the show is if fucking Sarah Michelle Gellar is off this show? No. If anybody had it out for Sarah Michelle Gellar, it was uh, Susan Lucci. Oh, they didn't get along? Oh, uh, hello. Sarah won an Emmy before Susan. Everybody won an uh, Emmy before Susan. <laughs> Let's be real. That's true. <laughs> uh, Susan. For you, Susan and Sarah, I'm I'm here for it. Seriously, let's get a little behind the scenes soap opera drama. Drama. Come on, Ryan Murphy, bring it to us, and also bring us a uh, feud, Tori, Jenny, and Tiffany. A hundred percent team Tiffany on this one. Oh yeah, I think the whole internet is team Tiffany by this point. Like every, like it just seems so catty and bitchy. Yeah, how can you fuck around with a girl who has? a fun cooking show and like invites her friends over for like a dinner party on a weekly basis well, at least we know who's never showing up at the dinner party i know like, what the fuck are tori and jenny doing right now uh, T- tori has like a reality show and like 47 children she's pregnant again <laughs> probably <laughs> i don't know and jenny and, and old navy commercials like what is she doing she's, she's not even doing old navy commercials she like Maybe it is a Hallmark movie once in a while. She's showing up in like People magazine talking about like maybe we might do a nine hundred two and zero reunion. Who knows? Yeah. So watch my reruns of What I Like About You in between two episodes of Family Feud. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably not even on anymore. The reruns. They're not. Yeah. I don't think anybody because it's so outdated. Yeah. No one's clamoring for uh, Amanda Bynes sitcoms from the early two thousands. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's clamoring for Jenny Garth to show up on Riverdale or anything. Yeah, except, well, ooh, I never thought of that. But you know what? I'd rather see Tiff. Uh, Team Tiff or Team yeah. Shando. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, here's the yeah. thing. They're both, like, anti-Shannon and they're both anti-Tiffany. So I'm kind of like, you girls come off as kind of catty, jealous bitches. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, what, 50 years old? Shouldn't you be over this? Yeah. And it's over, like, a boy, right? This is all over, like... <laughs> it was It was over the fact that it's. it seems to be over the fact that Tiffany is still friends with Tori's first husband, who Tori cheated on. Yeah, fuck her. Fuck Tori. <laughs> Sorry, Tiffany was friends with him first. She's not going to just... Because yeah, let- Tori was like, oh, I'm going to go have an affair with Dean on this Lifetime movie. Yeah, go do, like, Don't Sleep With Danger, Mom, part 17 or whatever. Mom, Mother May Sleep With Danger with fucking, like, vampires and werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> all right so sh- shall we discuss our book the book that we're doing tonight yeah sweet valley high issue not issue I- issue what do you call it book one it's book number one double love yeah we're going back to the beginning we're going back to the basics because well fran pascal's yes. original og book we had to like i didn't know what patrick really knew about sweet valley high and i felt like if i just threw him in into a random book he would be confused as fuck. Uh, I'm sure I would have caught myself up very quickly. This is not like, this is not a Harry Potter book. <laughs> this is not, you can't jump into like the prisoner of Azkaban or whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah. And try to figure out what's going on in the world of Harry Potter. No, this is Sweet Valley High. It's just petty, petty shit. Uh, twin sisters fighting and I don't know, hanging up on phones on each other. Yeah, it's so che- It's so <laughs> cheesy, but... It's so amazing at the same time. Yeah, it does get a little racy. There are a little, like a few little racy moments in this. We get like, like a, like a false rape accusation in this, in this book. <laughs> yeah, this whole thing is crazy. So, you have the twins, Jessica and Elizabeth Wakefield. Yes, they are blonde. They have blue green eyes. They are a perfect size six. Yes, shout out to perfect size six. I think, uh, although I did read when they remade the book, they rewrote it and updated it for the two thousands. They made them a size mm. four. Yeah, scandalous. <laughs> Which was stupid. <laughs> oh well. I've read an interview with um, Francine Pascal. 
I think it was Francie. It was somebody who worked on the books, and they said, oh, well, they probably went with a size 4 because that was the size the ghostwriter who was updating them was. Oh, yeah, like, this whole series is mostly ghostwritten. I think Francine it, Pascal just, yeah. like, oversaw it? She might have written a few of them? Yeah, she just oversaw it. The only thing Francine Pascal wrote was actually the Sweet Valley Confidential book, which Ooh. takes place 10 years after they've graduated high school. Ooh, is that... <laughs> and that is a ridiculous trippy journey in and of itself <laughs> oh so shall we get into francine pascal shall i do you think we should do a little uh a little brush through her her life before we go any deeper yeah give me the all deep right so uh francine pascal author of the series our sweet valley mastermind prior to her illustrious career as a blockbuster young adult author she collaborated with her husband john pascal and together they penned the 1964 abc daytime drama the Young Marrieds. Okay. Which focused on three young married couples in a suburban community. Okay, that's kind of like something we still get today, stuff like that. Yeah, and although it aired immediately after the mega-hit General Hospital on ABC, it aired opposite CBS's The Edge of Night, which was like the Top Gun soap opera of the time. Okay. So it only lasted like a year and a half, and then ABC gave it the boot the dirty old daytime mm. boot. Okay. Uh, you want to hear some fun cast members who were on The Young Marrieds? Yeah, let, let's hear who was on the show. All right, Ted Knight of Mary Tyler Moore fame. Oh, I love you, Ted Knight. May you rest in peace. Yes, and our girl Lee Merriweather, who was one of many faces to portray Catwoman on Batman 66. Ooh. She was also on uh, All My Children. Ooh, shout out to Lee Merriweather then. <laughs> and are you ready for this one? Are you ready for this? Okay. Charles Grodin. Really? Of Beethoven fame, and probably a million other things more important than Beethoven, but we are borderline millennials, so that's what we know him from. Yeah. Well, didn't he also have the, like, talk show <laughs> on, like, PBS or something? Something like that. I don't think I've ever seen it, though. I don't, I, I don't think I ever saw it. I just remember this episode of Seinfeld where Jerry wants the barbecue sauce that has the picture that looks like Charles Gordon. Uh, oh, yeah. On it. Because he's going on the show. Yeah, he wanted to bring it on as a as a uh, as a memento. <laughs> yeah, and then Kathy Griffin like sends him like other stuff, and she, he's like, "No, I wanted this stuff specifically for a reason." Fucking Kathy Griffin, always fucking things up. Yeah, and then she like gets pissed and starts doing stand up comedy to calling Jerry the devil. She kind of like usurps his his moment. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> uh, we should have done that episode of Seinfeld. Hey, you know. There's always future episodes. I mean, yeah, we have an entire podcast to to do. <laughs> yeah, but we have to start with the garage. So listen to that episode. Listen to us talk about the parking garage, like three episodes back, maybe something like that. I don't even remember anymore. Probably two. <laughs> All right. Uh, you want to hear about some of Francine Pascal's early novels pre Sweet Valley High? Yeah, let's hear about these. All right. So she had one of her early novels had been transformed into a teleplay that eventually became an after school special. Ooh. One was specifically called My Mother Was Never a Kid, which was based on her 1977 novel Hanging Out with Cece. And are you ready for the plot? Yeah, but just like throw it at me. <laughs> All right. Because <laughs> like I was thinking like, oh, like I was never like my mother was never a kid. Like I was like, oh, maybe she was a teen mom or something. No, this is about a 14-year-old girl who gets in trouble with her mom after getting caught smoking at school. Then she is magically transported back in time to the 1940s when her mother was a child and has to, like, hang out with her mom. Okay, then. And do you want to know who plays her, her mom as an adult? Let's hear it. Holland Taylor. Really? Yes, yeah, shout out to Holland Taylor. Wild love stuff, love us huh? some Holland Taylor. Yeah, <laughs> That's that's all the dirt that I have on Francine Pascal, unless you have any. Not really. Like, there's really not that much to know. I thought, like, she was a fake person. I was like, she's not real. She's just this made-up person. She's like a dear Mr. Henshaw. Was Mr. Henshaw real? No, Mr. Henshaw was not real, but I get what you're saying. <laughs> like, like, a, um, like a fake name, like a Christopher Pike. I don't even think that's, like, a real person. I think he's just yeah. a made-up made well, man. <laughs> I think part of it is because they did use ghostwriters for the whole series. Yeah, because they came out with a book every month. Yeah, they're... Every month a new Sweet Valley High book came out. There's no way fucking Francine Pascal sat in her fucking writing room and was just fucking tramping away at her typewriter frantically like the Kermit gif. Yeah, no. 
writing. You can be fast at writing, but it doesn't mean it's... <laughs> it's good. She originally developed Sweet Valley High as a teen soap opera for TV, but nobody picked it up. Yeah, this was like way before Degrassi well, exploded onto the scene, and yeah. people like, people aren't yeah, going to be into before, teens. Yeah, it was before like any of that stuff, really. There was no programming for teens, if you think about it. That wasn't like American Bandstand. Yeah, the only thing that teens wanted to watch in the afternoon was Dancing to Borderline by Madonna at 2.30 in the afternoon. Exactly. So <laughs> And seeing what the latest fashions were. So it, it failed to sell as a TV series, so she decided to develop it as a book series. And it worked. And it worked. So she like sold it to the publishing company. But she like maintained crea- creative control over like the whole thing, so... So I was reading about how how the whole process worked. They would have a Bible of all the like information. So there'd be like this big binder on like the editor's desk saying who's related to who, who's all that stuff. And like every couple months they'd go and they'd meet with Francine and like pitch story ideas. Kind of the way you would if you were a TV show writer pitching to the network like this is what we're going to do. And then Francine would get the final say, yes or no. <laughs> I can picture Francine just sitting in like a Game of Thrones throne with like a glass of wine in her hand and all these little minions that come to me like, I have a great idea, Francine. Uh, we should have Elizabeth travel to the future and meet her older self. And she's like, no, that's a horrible idea. And she like throws shit at him. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, so there's this crazy girl named Margot, right? And she looks exactly like the twins except with dark hair. So she bleaches her hair blonde after she kills her family, her foster family, and comes and tries to take over the lives of one of the twins. That would happen, totally happen in like a Christopher Pike book or an Arl Stein Fair Street book, I think. <laughs> yeah, this is legit something that happened in Sweet Valley High. Oh, it, it happened? Yeah, and then Margo turned out to oh, have damn. a twin as well. Oh, shit. Even though everybody thought Margo died, Margo didn't die, and yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> I'm going to have to find that one. What is that like a later on in the book, or is this like the yeah, next one? Yeah, it's way later on. Okay, when they, when they ran out of like normal stuff to do. Well, what they also did was um, the storylines kind of ebbed and flowed with um, the trends that were kind of hot at the time. So when, you know, things get a little more thrillery, and people are watching more shows about stalkers and stuff like that. There's stalkers. <laughs> Shout out <Yeah>. to Teen Thrillers. <laughs> so when was this book released? Do we know that? 1983. Yes. Uh, so shall we talk about the top five most popular books that were published in 1983? Are you ready for this? Yes. <laughs> All right. So I'm ready. The book was specifically released in October of 1983. For some reason, I could not find anything that else was released around that time so i just kind of had to jump out a little bit and just do the top five of 1983 so here we go number five the top number five book in 1983 was alana the first adventure by tamora pierce okay uh crickets uh insert the sound of crickets (laughs) uh this this was some fantasy bullshit about a young girl who begins her journey towards knighthood yes lady knights well sort of (laughs) plot twist the always adventure-seeking Alana switches places with her twin brother Tom, ooh, and pretends to be a boy to begin her training as a page. It's so very Deborah Sampson-ish. Yes, it is. Shout out to Deborah Sampson, and who was born in my old hoe town. So shout out to Plimpton, Mass. <laughs> okay, I was like, well, how does Patrick? Like, that's such a random name drop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we sometimes we like to dabble in history as well. I never got to see your house though, which I guess it's still there, and it's a minor tourist attraction. <laughs> Ooh, I would totally have checked that out if I ever had gone to visit you. I saw a picture of it and it didn't look that impressive, <laughs> so I was like, I'm not gonna go down there. It was only like a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> It was like a mile away from you for like your whole life, and you never went. No. Way to go, Patrick. Never did it. Uh, Plimpton is a strange town. You don't want to wander too far. It's one of those towns that you'll probably get kidnapped in because it's all woods. Oh, You know okay. when you hear, like, don't go into the woods? <laughs> like, yeah. literally, don't go into the woods. It's probably haunted. <laughs> uh, speaking of haunted, are you ready for number four? Yeah, give it to me. Christine by Stephen King. Okay. The story of an awkward teen... And a possessed 1958 red and white Plymouth Fury named Christine. Of course, you have to name your car. Yeah, you know how much I love a good possession story? Well, throw a murderous automobile and you got yourself a party. (laughs) Woohoo! 
Uh, I never read it, but I saw the movie. I have never read it, and I have never seen the movie. Ooh, okay. Well, we'll have to save it for a rainy day. A rainy Halloween day. Ooh. Uh, but keeping up with the uh, a little bit of the haunted theme, we have The Witches by Roald Dahl. Oh, I love that book. I love that book so much. Yeah, I knew you knew this one. Uh, this is the tale of the vile, cunning, detestable creatures who disguise themselves as nice, ordinary ladies. And they turn children into mice. Yes, they do. Plus, it was a fun, stunning 1990 film starring Angelica Houston. The book, I love the movie. Oh my god. And her long-ass prosthetic nose and bald head. I just remember that for some reason. That's what stands out. Yes. They have to wear the wigs because they're bald. So their heads get scratchy. Yeah, they get scratchy. They have to take them off at night and take Benadryl. They have no toes and all kinds of weird, crazy stuff. Yeah, they just have like block feet, don't they? Yeah. All right. Okay. Are you ready for number two? Yes. What is it? All right. I, I don't know what this is. I've never heard of this, but The Color of Magic by Terry Pratchett. Okay. It was a comedy slash fantasy novel about wizards and giant sea turtle. It was in it, I think. That's what I saw on the cover. Maybe elephants. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I read like two sentences of the description and was like, enough of this bullshit. <laughs> But yeah, it was fantasy bullshit. Um, must have been a big year for that, 1983. I am not here for it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, fantasy. Sorry, not sorry. Whatever they say. What are the cool kids say? Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, I don't do the fantasy thing either. It's just not my cup of tea. Yeah, well, you did do Gallivant. <laughs> okay, that's different, though. That was a musical. <laughs> oh, so if it's if it's guised in the form of a musical, it's all cool then, huh? Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, are you ready for number one? The number one book of 83? Yeah, give, Let's do it. Let's do it, baby. It <laughs> All right, uh, making his second appearance in this top five list, Stephen King with Pet Cemetery. Okay, makes sense. Uh, our boy Stephen is on a roll. Yeah. Don't bury your loving son or your pet in the creepy cemetery hidden in the woods behind your house because the dead will come back to life and cut you up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, I give this book a 666. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Have you ever read it or seen the movie? Nope. What? Like the horror stuff, just, I've just never been drawn to it. I don't know why, I just haven't. Like, you never seen this by accident on, like, TNT or something? No, never. It's never, never crossed your mind? Isn't that, like, I don't think, I'm trying to, th I don't think I've actually ever seen a Stephen King movie. Ooh. I have to, we have to... Our new goal, before 2017 ends... No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Did he write Misery? He did write Misery. Okay, I saw that. Misery wasn't, like, straight-up horror, though. It was, like, a kidnap thriller. Yeah, that, that's the only one I've seen. You haven't seen any of his crazy-ass movies or books that are, like, really crazy and have, like, weird elements in them. <laughs> nope. And, you know, I, I'm not afraid of clowns, so obviously I haven't. You will change your mind when you see the It miniseries. But you know what? It might not, like, affect you as much as an adult. Like, okay, if a clown was going to scare the crap out of me as a kid, it would have happened from that Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. Or Bozo the Clown, watching it early in the morning reruns. I never saw a Bozo the Clown show. Oh, they used to air reruns of, like, the original mm -hmm. Bozo of the Clown in my area like, at, like, 6 in the morning. And I was afraid as hell of him. Really? Yeah, it was creepy. He was a creepy dude. I don't know. He just looked scary to me. I don't know. I think at six o'clock in the morning when I was a kid, we got stuff like Swans Crossing. Oh, they they pushed that to the early morning in your in your neighborhood. Yeah, like what during uh, the summer it aired at like five o'clock prime prime syndicated time, and then like once like right before school started, they aired it at like six o'clock in the morning. Was it reruns or was it fresh eps? It was the end of the fresh eps, and then the reruns started. Yeah, because it wasn't on that long. There's not that many episodes of Swan Carson's, right? No, there's not. There's like, I think there's like 65 or something. And they're all on Hulu? Oh, they were yes, all? Yes, they're all on Hulu. Yeah, I tried to watch it. It's really hard to watch today, though. I don't really know why. But it's it... so cheesy. It's so cheesy. But oh, my God, I love it. <laughs> it looks like they took like a 1992 camcorder and just shot this series in like someone's backyard near near like yes, the but you water. Know what? <laughs> it's one of those shows where... You go back and you start spotting people who are now famous, and you're like, "Oh my gosh!" What are some other famous faces that are is that is in Swan's Crossing? Um. Okay, this is gonna blow your mind. Callie's father, whose name I forget, is played by the actor who plays Uncle Frank from the Home Alone movies. Oh, Uncle Frank makes a rare yeah. television appearance. That fucking asshole. <laughs> I was like, I was watching. I was like, "Oh my!" I'm like, "This guy, he's familiar." 
And then he's there's something that's like, oh my god, it's Uncle Frank. Was he singing in the shower? And you're like, hey, I know no. that. I know that shower singing tone. <laughs> <laughs> he was hanging out at the submarine that they lived on. Ooh, I forgot there was a character that lived in a submarine. What the fuck? What the mm-hmm. fuck was this show? Why did this show exist? Like, and we accepted it. <laughs> it existed, and we loved it just the same way those of us that read the Sweet Valley High books back in the day loved it. Yeah. So. Girls, are you ready for the official book summary that I ripped from Amazon.com of Sweet Valley High Double Love? Okay, let's hear it. All right, this is real. This was actually written, and I'm going to read it word for word. I'm not making this up. Okay. Welcome to Sweet Valley High, a world of good girls and bad girls. Hot boys with fast cars, perfect tans, and natural highlights, all under the Southern California sun. Ooh. All right, twin girls, identical in every way, yet they couldn't be more different. Jessica Wakefield is used to getting what she wants, at school, with her friends, and especially with the boys, and she'll stop at nothing to get it. Elizabeth Wakefield is used to letting her twin sister have her way. There's not much that's worth fighting her over. Lost earrings can be replaced, petty problems can be resolved, and rampant rumors can be doused like a fire. But when it comes to Todd Wilkins, Liz isn't so sure she should step aside and make way for Jessica. This time, Jessica Wayfield is going to have some competition from her own sister. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Drama! <laughs> yeah, they they really played that up more than it really was, though. Because <laughs> well, I feel like Liz is very passive. She is. She's very... She's... <laughs> She just lets Jessica walk all over her. Yeah, and she doesn't get a backbone to, like, the last four pages. <laughs> yeah, dude. And trust me, the backbone doesn't last. And it's not, it's... It's always... It's nothing thrilling. <laughs> yeah, it's always, if Jessica whines and bitches enough, Liz will give in eventually. She's like, all right, whatever, whatever, Jess. It's like, like oh, Jessica has to be happy. Who cares about my own happiness? Yeah. So, they're twin sisters... They obviously have different personalities, as yep. the aforementioned in the summary. And they're popular, I guess. I guess they're both equally popular. You know, they're, yeah, they're both probably popular. It's just, I feel like there's really not that many kids at Sweet Valley High. <laughs> it all, like, circles around, like, five people, the same five teens. Yeah. teens. <laughs> they're popular enough. They're not, you know, like... They make it onto the dance courts or whatever, you know, princesses and all that crap. They become members of, what was the the Phi Beta Kappa? What was the thing they were trying out for in this? Yeah, the sorority, because high schools have sororities and fraternities. Yeah, I was so, I was so baffled by this, because I was like, like, wait, is this a Southern California thing, or is this just a thing Francine Pascal has no idea, and is just making shit up in her head? I, I think this is just something she made up. Yeah, like she probably is confused in high school and college because she probably was like a 40-year-old woman when she wrote this. Exactly. And she knew nothing really about what teens were doing. Like, I could see them having clubs, but not sororities, not fraternities. That's very much a college thing that's not high school at all. Yeah, like the whole thing is like you live with your sisters and you do sisterly things and Mm -hmm. have mixers with with the boys with the boy fraternities yeah <laughs> something like that that all i everything i know about sororities and fraternities i've learned from revenge of the nerds and abc families greek yeah exactly so. <laughs> i'm like what's a fraternity do like what do they do <laughs> <laughs> like or that show on um MP- mtv the sorority life and the fraternity life shows oh that they used to do. yeah that that pseudo reality show that was very like the hills ish before the hills pl- plopped yeah. on the scene they just had a bunch of where they would follow the pledges yeah they they were like you would get a season of this sorority life then it would end and then the characters would cross over to the fraternity life and you get to see continuing adventures i forgot about that show yeah i totally forgot about it until like just now <laughs> i was thinking of room raiders last night mtv classic i need a weekend like a binge of this show now. i know we should have a block of that and then Room Raiders, which I thought of last night, and I used to always just think about, like, imagine if you were just, like, sitting in your bedroom and, like, MTV knocked on your door and they wanted, like, a random person to run through all your shit and you didn't have time to clean up and, oh my god, the things they would find. <laughs> oh my god. Coming through the blacklight, looking for cum stains. <laughs> oh my god, they always found, like, the most embarrassing stuff in those places. I know, but I feel like it was mostly set up. Oh yeah, totally. 
hundred percent. It's like, uh, can you just jack off on this sheet right here so our black light can run over it? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So <laughs> I just never, cause my college didn't have Greek life at all. So yeah, mine didn't either. I, I had like a shitty college and then I went to online college after. So we obviously didn't have yeah, Greek so... life at online school, but we should have. <laughs> yeah, we didn't, we didn't do the Greek life thing. We just hung around our dorm rooms and drank and watched Dawson's Creek and talked about Pacey. No, because Dawson's Creek ended when we were in college. And I thought I told you this. I couldn't watch a whole season of Dawson's Creek because I didn't get the channel in my dorm. Yeah, I, that's why I brought it up because I Asshole. wanted you to kind of feel shitty. <laughs> did that Did that burn hurt? Yes, it did. And then I like when TBS started doing the reruns of Dawson's Creek right before the series ended, I'd watch them because I had mono. And I'd, like, fall asleep. Oh, yeah. They had, like, those Saturday marathons. They'd, like, it'd be, like, four hours of Dawson's Creek in the morning on TBS. Yeah. This is this was, like, Netflix before Netflix binging was mm-hmm. a thing. Like, TBS was onto something, and they didn't, they really didn't understand what they were onto. Oh, my God. TBS used to do those um, Saved by the Bell marathons in the middle of the night. Oh, those are, those are wild. Those are wild times. <laughs> Yeah, I would stay. I would always stay up to watch it, be, and my mom would let me. It would be like staying up all night reading a Sweet Valley High book. That's like the modern yeah. equivalence, equivalency of that. Yeah, it's like you could stay up and watch Saved by the Bell on TBS, or you could stay up and watch Parker Lewis Can't Lose on USA. <laughs> shout out to all of that. And shout out to Sweet Valley High, which I think we should dive back into. Yes, let's get back there. Greek life in the school exists, and... Jessica and Elizabeth, they're, like, trying to get on into the squad. That's their their whole, like, goal. Yeah, they're trying to get into the sorority. It's more Jessica wants in, and Elizabeth is just going along because she's a doormat, and she has to. Yeah, she's like, you know what? We're twins. People will probably see us and remember us and mm-hmm. allow us to be on there. And I think that's what happened. They had, like, very early in the book, they get accepted into this sorority yeah because the book starts the day that they find out whether or not they get in yeah because uh jessica's waiting by the phone waiting for the sorority to call her up but before the sorority calls up todd wilkins calls looking for liz yes todd calls wanting to talk to elizabeth but jessica does not want that to happen because jessica wants todd for herself yeah, Jessica is a twat swat, and she just does not want Liz to have happiness. No, she doesn't, and she basically wins in the end. Yeah, so like Liz is like, oh, who was on the phone? And she's like, oh, it was nobody, it was, um... Oh, it was just Todd wishing me good luck. That's what it is. Oh, yeah, she, she rubs it in her face. Yeah, she doesn't realize just how much Todd and Liz like each other, because all she cares about is that she wants Todd... For herself. Yeah, and Liz keeps having these like near misses with, with Todd yeah. Wilkins. It's like the phone call happens, Todd's looking for Liz. Liz is like a room over waiting for the call, but Jessica answered the phone first. Mm-hmm. And then Jessica has to like shove it in her face and just be like, oh, Todd was calling me and he wanted to tell me that I looked cute in my little short skirt today with the in the low cut top. Exactly. And, and Liz is like, Liz is pissed. She's like green with envy. She's like, of course Todd would like jessica over me because every guy likes jessica over me and it's like okay you could either have a guy who actually like likes you or a guy who thinks you're gonna put out most of these guys think jess is gonna put out and you know what though it's like jessica is trying to make liz feel shitty but one they're identical so you definitely know it's not about looks it's yeah it's about personality and liz already knows that jessica is kind of a bitch so, mm-hmm. like you were saying, you know, Todd's probably calling up Jessica because she's going to put out. But does sexual things ever happen in Sweet Valley High? Because I feel like they just, they talk about kissing a lot. Um, I don't, do, do characters lose their virginity in this at any point in time? Does, are they all just like Ken dolls? All the, are all the men Ken dolls? No, there, it, it comes up once in a while. They had like a sex ed class. <laughs> like, well, there's the whole thing with um the girl that the brother is dating. Like, oh, <laughs> Her sister is apparently, like, loose. Oh. Is, like, the school slut or something. So they're like, how dare you date this girl whose sister had dared to have sex? It's so scandalous. How how much older is the twin's brother? Like, is he in college? Yeah, he's in college. He's a couple years older. That's what I got, because they were excited that he came back home. Yes, because the university <laughs> is so far away. 
It's still in town. <laughs> Do you know what? The scene with the twin sisters, like, reacting to their brother is so creepy. Because they it was so sexualized for some reason. Like, I don't know. That's just what I got from it. You should read the books that go through the family tree of the Wakefields. Because there's definitely some stuff where it's, like, the older brother of the whatever generation set of twins is like, oh, yeah, you should meet my hot sisters. And it's like, dude, they're your sisters. You should not... <laughs> be calling them that or anything and trying to hook them up with your college age friends yeah it reminded me of Sharon and josh on clueless like the way they acted when they when steven showed up he's only in like two pages of of plot in this book it, yeah he's just mentioned just so they just so we can realize that there's an older brother and yeah he's just, just a little bit of plot yeah he's just like the start of the whole thing yeah it's just they kind of just want to brush the surface with him <laughs> but i was just i was so creeped out by this don't worry dynamic. you'll come up later steven you'll have your own books like the whole dynamic just creeped me out for for a hot second i was like ooh, like this this is getting into some like sweet valley scandal right here we're gonna get a little like sweet valley incest maybe uh yeah <laughs> this isn't riverdale there's like 180 more books of sweet valley high <laughs> Yes. So who knows what'll happen? <laughs> uh, wh what's the name of Elizabeth's friend? Uh, Edna Eden. Enid. E Enid. Enid. Okay. So th they describe her as like having glasses and funny, which is like code mm. for ugly. Yeah. She's. Oh. <laughs> she's Rachel Lee Cook at the beginning of She's All That. Uh, she wishes she was Rachel Lee Cook at the beginning of She's All. Enid is like one of the worst. Like she she's got this weird secret. That really, I don't see how it's a secret kind of thing. It's just so weird. Well, they keep bringing up the secret in this book. They keep mentioning it, but they never actually say what it is because it's it's kind of like the cliffhanger for book two. Yeah, it's gonna. It's what they want you to go buy the second book to read and find out. Can you just spoil it? Do you do you know what it is? is that she was in the car when her ex when her boyfriend at the time was drunk and drove and killed some kid or something. Ooh. Actually, you said that, that that's nothing. That's like that's like the beginning of like I know what you did last summer. Well, like it's not a it shouldn't be a secret because if this like happened in Sweet Valley or in a town nearby, everybody would know about it. I, I feel like 1983 things moved a lot slower though. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, one thing. I mean, there was no Twitter and Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, there wasn't like hashtag Enid Secret out there. Hash oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm just like, now I'm thinking about all the crazy hashtags you could have used for Sweet Valley High books. Yeah. Uh, you were I'm, like, tweeting and reading them. I'm sure in the update that it's there. I'm, I'm sure the Eyes and Airs segment, which is, is totally like Gossip Girl ripped off the Eyes and Airs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that whole thing. So should we explain what Eyes and Airs is? Yes, explain that. Alright, so I guess... Liz and Enid work on, is it the Oracle? It's the name of the school newspaper? Yes, the Oracle is the name of the school paper. <laughs> Sounds like like something that would be like in the DC Comics universe, the Oracle. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's actually like a superhero's name. I think it's it's Batgirl after she becomes handicapped, she becomes the Oracle. <laughs> oh, okay. But in Sweet Valley High, it's it's the publication that, that publishes like high school gossip, I think. Yeah, there's so it's like the school paper and there's a gossip column. That's healthy. But it's written like you're not supposed to know who writes it cuz if they if the other kids find out they throw you in the pool. Yeah, so if they if you find out who the eyes and ears of the school is before the school year ends, you will get tossed in the pool by the by your classmates like at the annual pool party or something. I I don't know. <laughs> yeah, or just like just at Whatever, like, event is happening, because I guess the pool's always open at the event. There's always a pool in Sweet Valley High, like, no matter where you go. Yeah, there's always a part. There are more parties and dances in Sweet Valley High than Gossip Girl, the OC, combined. Yes. <laughs> and there's probably a pool at Kelly's Roadhouse, which is, like, the local bar. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, the local dive bar that... <laughs> that teens go to sometimes. That fucking Jessica <laughs> goes to. With this, like, high school dropout, Rick Andover, who just dreamed Wooderson. From Days and Confused? Days and Confused, yes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> except with dark hair. That's totally how I picture this guy. I pictured Rick Andover having a cool, like, teen mustache. <laughs> did you Did you picture that? Well, yeah. That's what the description gave, but... Did it actually say mustache? I think so, yeah. Or maybe I'm just thinking about it from the book covers I've seen that has that had Rick on it. See, I'm... Yeah, I was picturing, like, a guy with a mullet... 
like a dark haired mullet, mm-hmm. uh, a mustache, short sleeve shorts with like his cool tattoo showing. Yeah. Like a cut off flannel. That's what I was picturing. <laughs> like he took an old flannel and cut, cut off the sleeves yeah, some- and like tight ass jeans <laughs> with, with like a sock in his crotch so he, he can look bigger. Oh my God. Yeah. That's totally Rick <laughs> Uh But he was like, the, I thought he was like the coolest character in this book. I'm not going to lie. I was like, <laughs> I think I like Rick Andover more than anybody else. Oh my god. Yeah, so he like hits on Jessica and they go to a bar. He gets drunk. The whole thing is so stupid. Like he gets in a fight with some guy. The cops show up. The cops think Jessica is Elizabeth and she just goes with it. The police officer is like the older brother of one of Elizabeth's friends, I think, or something like that, Emily. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Oh, I know who you are. You're my you're my like younger sister Emily's friend, Elizabeth." And Jessica this is like the perfect escape clause. She's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm Elizabeth." She doesn't Yeah. She doesn't say, "No, I'm I'm Jessica." And the town snoop, what's what was the town snoop saying? Like Car- Caroline Pierce. Caroline Pierce. I guess when the cop is dropping Jessica off at home, Caroline's like walking her dog or something and she like sees mm-hmm. she sees well, she thinks it's Elizabeth. She doesn't think it's Jessica. Oh my god, come on. Like just common sense alone. If one of the twins is getting dropped off at home with by a police car, it's not going to be Elizabeth. It's going to be Jessica. And if you can't tell the twins apart, I'd be like, it was either Jessica or Elizabeth. And then that would be the rumor. <laughs> you guys figure it out. <laughs> yeah. It was like, what about... <laughs> like, let's think. Common sense. Who would be crazy enough to do this? Elizabeth? No. Jessica? Yes. Well, is there bad blood between Caroline and Elizabeth? I think there's bad blood between everybody and Caroline, because she's just such a nosy little bitch. She's like the neighbor on Small Wonder, right? That's what I picture. <laughs> yeah, she she's the, she's the Mrs. Kravitz kind of character. She's always outside. You know, the one who's always, like, causing trouble, and she's peeking through the blinds. Yeah. She's always in the bushes with, like, her binoculars and her notepad <laughs> yeah she's always trying to like stir up trouble i'm surprised they didn't like peg her to be the eyes and ears of the school because... oh you would have guessed it was her right away Let's be real. <laughs> she's like the luella parsons slash hedda hopper yeah just dropping bombs all over town <laughs> she's she's not blind item though she she comes right out <laughs> oh yeah she'll be like so guess which wakefield twin i saw getting out of a cop car not jessica it was elizabeth yeah, s- s- spills the tea all over town, <laughs> leaves a trail of fucking tea leaves everywhere. Yeah, and that's like the whole thing with this is Elizabeth doesn't even know that Jessica did this. And so all these like things start happening, like people keep like saying stuff to her at school about it. And she's like, what are people talking about? Yeah, she thinks like people are just making this up. She's like, I don't get why is Bruce Patman like all of a sudden trying to get in my pants? Like, what the hell? Yeah, can we talk about Bruce Patman? Yeah, let's talk about Bruce. All right, so he's, like, a rich, snobby teen who has, like, fancy yes. cars and probably wears, like, sweaters with collars popping out of it. He probably, he's got, like, the sweater, like, tied around his neck kind of thing. The po- the polo shirt and, like, yeah. the short shorts. I'm picturing, like, Steve Sanders. <laughs> Only with dark hair. Yeah, like like a season one Steve Sanders. Like, yes. His parents are rich and he can do whatever he wants. He can always get away with it. He can probably, like, cheat at school. No one's gonna, like, no one's gonna kick him out of school because his parents probably like bought all the library books or something exactly that's totally bruce yeah Yeah. (laughs) and he he wants liz is that what i gathered like he's been eyeing i think he wants like whichever twin he can get into bed because he he tries he tries to ask liz to the dance and she's like no i'm going with winston is that his name yes winston who's like (laughs) you're just nerdy little Less annoying screech type. Yeah, like, she just says she's going with Winston just because he happened to be right there. Yeah, and Winston's like, okay, I'll go with you. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, we, we finally, like, get a, a scene at the school dance. So Jessica ends up going mm. with Todd Wilkins. Who is because Todd, being the freaking idiot he is, actually thinks that Liz went to this bar and he's pissed off at her he's like how could you do this and she's like what are you talking about yeah and um (laughs) the what jessica says to liz all right so as soon as liz finds out that it was jessica at kelly's roadhouse Mm -hmm. jessica's like oh you don't want to go out with uh todd he we went out the other night and he tried to grab me and he was touching me in places that he shouldn't have touched and liz is just like oh that's gross and you would have thought she would have, like, maybe told her parents or told the police or told somebody at school that, like, Jessica was, like, almost raped by somebody. But no, she yeah. just keeps it to herself. And 
believes it. and she, She's got it filed away for the eyes and ears column one day when Jess pisses her off. Yeah, she's or if Todd pisses her off. And she confronts yeah. Todd, and she, but she doesn't like explicitly come out and say. She's just like, I know what you did, and you, you're a pig. And Todd's like, what did I do? What did I do, Liz? And she's like, you know, and she like hangs up the phone. So it's not like yeah. she ever reveals it to him. It's stupid, because Jess realizes Todd likes Liz and Liz likes Todd and she's like I can't let that happen I gotta get Todd for myself yeah but she still goes to the dance with him though like <laughs> after <Yeah>. all that <laughs> and then well no 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 that's when she makes the accusation is it... no you're right yeah cause I cause they were building up this like big climatic moment at the dance which mm-hmm. never happens <laughs> yeah cause you thought like the dance was gonna be a blowout no it's just like Jessica and Todd are good dancers uh, Liz ends up having like a good time with Winston with Winston and I don't know, they all go home or something. And I think like Liz ends up talking to um, Todd at the dance, maybe. Yeah, they they keep looking at each other across the room. Yeah. Just all like hard eyes and whatnot. Yeah. And like Jessica notices it. Jessica notices like that. Ooh, Todd keeps looking at Liz and Liz keeps looking at Todd. But so like Jessica keeps going like further away. Yeah. I was, like, waiting for a fight or a bitch slap or, like, someone throwing punch at somebody's dress. Oh, it's too early for that. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm picturing, like, di- dynasty-style cat fight. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. Like, falling into the pool, wet hair, everyone, like, looking in shock, everyone being shook as fuck. But no, we don't we don't get that. But no. <laughs> nothing like that. No, it's like, it was a nice night. <laughs> they played good music. It's like, it's a nice night. Todd and Liz finally talk and... Yeah, they, they figure out... Kind of figure stuff out. Even though Todd is still... Todd is such an asshole. It's like, I forgive you, Liz. Like, dude, she didn't do anything that you need to forgive her for. And even if she did something, she doesn't need your forgiveness, you asshole. You guys weren't dating. Well, I guess Jessica reveals to Todd that it was her at Kelly's Roadhouse. Mm -hmm. And Todd thinks Jessica is just being noble and, like, covering for Liz. You are not brand new. (laughs) You know these girls. You've known these girls for, like, years. You you honestly think that Liz went to a bar on a school night and got into a fight? Like, come on. Like, think about it. With Randy... Randy Andover. (laughs) A guy with a mustache. (laughs) And then steals the twins' Jeep, or whatever car they're driving. Yeah, she has, like, things to do. Liz has, like, activities she's involved in. She has to, like, write articles. She's the fucking eyes and the ears of the school. She mm-hmm. hangs out with fucking Enid, who is a nerd. Oh, <laughs> uh, Enid is the worst. <laughs> Fuck Enid. Enid becomes, like, just unbearable later on in the books and in the other series. She just becomes a total... Bitch. Do they eventually write her out? Say yes. <laughs> well, like in college, she decides she's going to go by Alex, and she and Todd are hooking up, and they're drunk, drinking all the time, and eventually Enid becomes a doctor, and she's just Ooh. like such a, a bitch to everybody that she's not really she's not in the group anymore. Yeah, I'm not a fa- I was not a fan of Enid since day one, so mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I might have to skip secrets the next book. <laughs> well she's the one who like ends up in the plane crash and becomes paralyzed for a short time. Oh, ooh, I love that element. I love the like, the the wild soap opera twists this series. Oh my takes. god, like the whole thing like that like she's up in the plane with her boyfriend who's also a high school student, and he just got his pilot's license. And he crashes the plane, like he's going to take her up for one ride, and then he's going to break up with her, but then the plane crashes, and she's paralyzed, and he's like, I can't break up with her now. <laughs> it's it's so very, like, Nashville-ish. It's, so, it's, a, it's a soap opera, in book form, and it's amazing <laughs> and crazy and stupid. Yeah, so are, are we going to do another book of Sweet Valley High at some point in time, do you think? Oh, yes. Or, or shall we take a trip on over to Fair Street? Uh, well, we'll do all kinds of stuff. We'll bounce around. Whatever we can get our hands on. Yes. So shall we talk about how this bad boy ends? <laughs> shall we talk about... Yes, let's talk about this crazy, the actual climax. The pull push. <laughs> so... No, 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 we gotta... You, did we not talk about Rick stealing the car with the twins in it? Oh, the car chase. No, we... The car we, chase. I forgot about that. Yeah. There's a dramatic car chase in this. <laughs> it, there's such a, It's so dramatic. It's so ridiculous. But it's so awesome. So somehow... Uh, Rick Andover st- steals, I guess, the Jeep that Jessica and Elizabeth are in. Like, he, like, pushes his way into the car. He's drunk. 
He's like loaded. And he like races off and the girls are freaking out. And Todd ha- jumps into his Datsun and chases after them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he catches up to them and like he manages to like safely pull them over. Yeah, like get them like it's so you you know what you've got to do. You've got to find the audio book of this on YouTube. And listen to it because it's just amazing. <laughs> it's got sound effects and everything. Yes. Yeah, so I, I read I read the book originally about a month ago, and I I must have just not paid attention too much because I just missed so many details. Mm-hmm. And then when we decided to do it for the podcast, I was like, there's no way I can actually sit down and read this again. And I forgot everything. Yeah. And then you sent me the link to the audiobook on YouTube. It's an hour long. You will go through it in an hour. It's like watching an episode at 9 to 1 hour. Yeah, it, it's so easy. I, I listened to it while I was walking back from taking my nephew to school and then walking to take him to school or pick him up or something. The voice acting in this is just fucking amazing. It's top notch voice acting. Like every character is like... Re- uh, like represented by a different voice actor so it's not just listen to one guy read the book except for the twins yeah but i mean there's different cadence in the voice so you can tell them apart yeah there's yeah the guy that plays todd kind of sounds like luke perry a little bit mm-hmm. and then like you i love there's a narrator everyone oh it's amazing you have seek this out yeah it's a male narrator that's what really like kills me it's like this male voice reading this teen soap opera and i love when he does like the inner dialogue of liz or jessica oh it has like the greatest like <laughs> music oh when they when they end the chapters they they bust in this obvious 80s sound i might actually try to interject this into the podcast somehow i'll find a way okay just so you can experience it it, it is amazing There's... you guys gotta find this <laughs> Yes, it's it's very easy to find. Just search Sweet Valley High on YouTube and it pretty much will come up. And I think there's other books that are available in this format too. So. Yes, I might have to go download some more. You can dive into the whole universe. <laughs> yeah, so when this car chase scene's going on, you get like the sounds of like revving engines and stuff mm-hmm. and like screeching tires and it's and it's the squeal great. of the brakes and everything. And the cra- oh, the actual yeah. crash. It's awesome. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> and then so like Todd Todd and do Todd and Rick like actually have a fight? Do they actually like fist fight? I don't remember. I think they just kind of like tackle each other and yeah, they kind of like tackle and wrestle. There's no like, let's be real. Todd's kind of a pussy. Yeah, and Rick is like too drunk, I think, to actually like physically yeah. like win a fight. Because <laughs> exactly, I love like the slurring drunk Rick Andover voice acting. It's great. <laughs> yes, it's perfection. <laughs> it's the best drunk voice acting I've ever heard. Like. If you told me that they actually got the voice actor drunk to do this, I'd believe it. Yeah. <laughs> That's how golden it is. It's stellar. Todd saves the day. He saves the sisters. The sisters kind of like patch things up for the moment. For now. But Liz has a little revenge plot going. Yeah. So because Liz is the eyes and ears, the gossip columnist of the school, mm-hmm. uh, she decides that they're they're going to show up to this like pool party or something. I don't know. Some kind of event. It's like the bonfire or something before a big game. Yeah. But it's near the pool. Yeah. Close enough to the pool that she convinces Jessica to wear an outfit that Jess has borrowed from her before. Yeah. No, 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 no. She wears um the tuxedo outfit that Jess wanted, wore at the start of the book so that people think she's Jessica. Because they saw Jess in that outfit. Yes. And she convinces just to wear something that is very Elizabeth like that so people think that Jess is is Liz. Yeah, so when Liz gets out of the car, I guess Jessica called up one of her other friends, like one of her gossipy friends. Is it Kelly? Was that her name? I don't I remember. I feel like her, there was a girl I feel like there's a girl named Kelly in this. Yeah, I there is, know. I think. So she, we'll just call her Kelly. <laughs> yeah. Her so, name's Kelly now, whatever. Yeah, you're Kelly. You're branded as Kelly. So Elizabeth calls up Kelly and is like, hey, I'm the eyes and ears. When I show up at the bonfire, I want you to announce it to the whole school. So yeah. Elizabeth, uh, Jessica gets out of the car. Kelly announces, oh, my God, Elizabeth is eyes and ears. And everyone. <laughs> yeah, because they because Jess or no, Liz goes to talk to the band because that's who it is. And she leaves Jess with Todd. She tells Todd the plan. And so everybody thinks that she that Jess is Liz, and they throw her in the pool when the announcement is made. And that's Liz getting her revenge on Jessica for all of this. Yeah. <laughs> and 
Liz and Jessica like go back home, and then they're like, "Oh, like, well, it was funny. Ha <laughs> ha. We'll be friends now." Uh -huh. We're t still twin <laughs> sisters and the best of friends until Jessica does something else to try and come between Liz and Todd. But before all that all happens, there's a knock at the door. The doorbell rings. Dun dun dun. And who's at the door in tears? Enid. And what is she here for? We don't know because you have to wait until the next book, Secrets, coming out next month. <laughs> Ooh. I was so pissed when that when they like dropped that ended. I was like, the fuck? I want to know Enid's secret. I don't want to have to sit through another book. Yeah, exactly. But thank you for telling me. So now I don't have to sit through another book. Now I can just jump ahead to like a better one. Yeah. The, <laughs> oh my God. Sweet Valley High is so crazy. Like you have Regina who ends up as Bruce's girlfriend. She's like deaf, but then she can get treatment to here in Switzerland. And then she goes to a party one night and tries cocaine one time and dies. Ooh, we get drugs in Sweet Valley High, and she dies from her first time. Oh, yeah, time. there's drugs, there's magical vodka, there, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. There's vampires and werewolves. Damn, this is like turning into Twilight. <laughs> it, it, and this is all long before any of that stuff. Yeah, this, this obviously must have been like at the end of the run where they tried to make the, you know... The older fans, like, still interested in this kind of shit? Well, like, the cocaine <laughs> thing isn't early on in the series. Yeah, I mean, I could see drugs being introduced early on because you have to throw drugs in at some point. You can't have, like, a teen-based book or TV or movie series and not have drugs or alcohol involved somehow. It's exactly. like a Exactly. Like, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. Like, there's a character who has MS and drinks on her pills and has a car accident and... All kinds of stuff. I think that's the character that looks like Nancy Kerrigan on the cover. <laughs> Shout out to Nancy Kerrigan for making an appearance. <laughs> well, okay. I'll tell you why I remember this. Because I read that book in the sixth grade right when the whole Nancy Tanya drama was going on. And we'd be like in my reading class and my friends and I'd be like, this chick looks like Nancy Kerrigan. You need to tweet a pic of that cover. We have to put it on. I got to find it. I got to find the book. We should go through the covers and tr try to like analyze the covers someday. Like in the next time, the next time we do book club. It's just like, let's talk about Sweet Valley High book covers. We'll do, or we do like a special bonus app where we go through and just like analyze the covers. Oh, they're so, <laughs> I love the Sweet Valley High covers actually, because they're just so 80s. Because the covers are, are wild in themselves. <laughs> like they're just so. Yes, they have, they have the um, block letterman kind of thing going for the title the circle cut out with the actual picture of whichever characters are the focus of the book because it's not always the twins they're they're very 80s but they also look like they could be like 60s as well like some of them like have like a like a look of the 60s yeah <laughs> all right shall we talk about what we're doing next week Yes, what is next? All right, so we are going back to the world of television. We are going back to sitcoms. Uh, we're going to we're gonna go to the 90s. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to go into the little realm of magic. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to do the Disney World episode. Shout out to Heather. I think she, like, pseudo-requested this. Yeah, she... Heather has wanted us to do one of those TV sitcom episodes where they go to, like, Disney World. Really bad. And we decided to do Sabrina the Teenage Witch, the Disney World episode, season two, episode 23. Yeah. So, uh, Heather, you get your wish. I am sure you just, like, dropped your phone and screamed <laughs> right now. <laughs> you're on the bus or something, and you're like, oh my god, finally! Yeah, your, your iPhone screen is now cracked because of this. <laughs> we apologize. Sorry, Heather. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> uh, so, definitely join us next time when we get a little witchy. Melissa Joan Hart style. Yes. And as always. Bye. Peace out.